In order to understand older forms of a language, we sometimes have to look at how it was written in the past. So in this video, we'll talk about the relationship between language and writing and how writing was invented. So first of all, writing and language are two different things. They're different. Regarding universality, all humans can speak a language. They can, um, all humans in the world have some language that they use, whereas there's many languages that don't have a writing system. And yet people can use these languages to communicate any thought that they need. As regarding acquisition, all humans acquire language um, when they're babies. If they're learning it during their critical period between zero and three years old, they will learn a human language. They can't help it. It's like an instinct. On the other hand, writing is something that you need to put a lot of effort into. It takes time. It takes years of scholarization. And even if you practice over years, you still make spelling mistakes from time to time. Um, regarding standardization, humans are very fluid in their style when they use language. They code switch, they go from very formal to informal in a second. Whereas in writing, writing is usually restricted to standards, to very in, uh, fixed forms. And you need to write in these fixed forms or else it's going to be considered a mistake. Language spoken in sign changes every day. Every day new words are invented, new expressions are used, meanings change. Whereas with writing, writing changes relatively slowly. You still use the same orthography that was used by your parents and grandparents and 100 and 500 years ago. Whereas this is not true of your words in general of your language. Finally, when you hear speech, for example, it has all of the data you need to understand what the other person is saying. But with writing, you need to transform the writing into speech so that you can understand it. For example, you need to imagine their intonation. You need to add stress, the stress mentally and so forth be before you can understand what the writing says. So these are some differences between language and writing. If anything, writing is something like a technology um, no, all writing systems are used to represent speech and none of them represent speech perfectly. For example, in the writing system of English, we don't mark uh, stress. We don't have special marks to tell you whether a word is today or tomorrow. These words are not today and tomorrow. You have to learn that from memory and somehow retrieve it from memory when you see the graphic forms. Also, the writing of English does not have a one-to-one -one correspondence with the sounds. So you have words like read and read, um, I'm sorry, read and read, which uh, have the same graphical form, but they're not pronounced the same. So you need to do quite a bit of guessing when you see written English to transform that into real English. Every writing system has some quirk where they don't represent speech perfectly. In Spanish, there's many letters that are silent, like the H in arina. And there's letters that have more than one pronunciation, like this symbol here is jopa, if it's at the beginning of a word, or caro, if it's in the middle of the word. So think of writing systems as different microwaves. They all like reheat your food in slightly different ways and they have slightly different buttons. They all have the same function and they do things in slightly different ways. And none of them are food. <laughs> They're just a vessel to transport food to you. Writing is a technology and it's one of the most wondrous technologies that humanity has invented. It has been invented at least three times in history. Um, it was invented in Sumer about 5,000 years ago. And this was the invention of the cuneiform writing system. Um, Egyptian was probably influenced by Sumeria, and that ha that's how the Egyptian hieroglyphs started. Chinese characters were created about 3,000 years ago, and they were used for divination. These are turtle shells, and they wrote symbols on them to see how the shell would crack under fire to see if the divination was a positive or a negative one. These are Maya hieroglyphs, which were invented about 3,000 years ago in southern Mexico and northern Guatemala. 
and they are an independent writing tradition. But as you, you know, as you will see in the next video, it, they work under very similar principle, principles to other writing systems. How did writing start? It probably started as drawings. These are tokens from Uruk in Sumer uh, from about more than 5,000 years ago. And you can see how these are tokens to count goats and sheep. And this hole here probably meant that there were about 10 of them. So first people had drawings which could be interpreted from context. Uh, likewise, in other writing traditions, uh, you had drawings for not just commerce, but for example, religious or uh, words or drawings of kings. So they could be interpreted from context. I have a little challenge for you. What does this say? Try to read that. Please pause the video. What would you say if I told you that that says believe? Um, this is called the Rebus principle. It's taking a picture and reinterpreting it as sounds. So even though the word believe has nothing to do with bees or leaves, we use their sounds to transmit a different meaning, but which has the same sounds. The Rebus principle was how these drawings, pictograms, started to become letters. In Old Chinese, for example, this picture um, stood for the word wheat, which must have been pronounced something like mrek. But it sounded very similar to the word to come, mrek. And so people would draw a little uh, stalk of wheat to mean to come. And to this day, this uh, character still means to come. So as you can see, the Rebus principle meant, meant that you take the drawing for one thing and use it for another thing with, with similar pronunciation but different meaning. This symbol in Old Sumerian was pronounced gi, and it's read, but it began to be used for the word reimburse because it had a similar pronunciation. The Aztecs also used the Mayan glyphs. There were several um, societies in Mexico that used them. And this symbol here is the rebus with two parts. The upper part is acatl, which is read, and the lower part is cinco, which is a part of the lower body. But cinco is also the morpheme for the diminutive. So this was read little reads, acat cinco, which is the name of a town in Mexico. And this was the hieroglyph used to represent it. So we go from pictures to rebus, to the rebus principle, where we use pictures for their sounds. But we can go one step further and maybe reinterpret the symbols as just having the sound, the first sound of the word. For example, these were Egyptian hieroglyphs, like a kind of ox, a kind of house, and a stick. And in the system proto sinaitic from about 4,000 years ago, they were reinterpreted as just the first sound of each of the words. So in, in, the, uh, in Sinaitic, these would have been pronounced alp, bait, and gamel. But the signs were reinterpreted to, be, to stand not for the whole sound, but for the first sound. So this was, became the glottal stop, this became the b in bait, and this the g in gamel. So Proto-Sinaitic was a writing system which only which uh, used the first consonant of each word to write the language, and you uh, you might be asking, don't they, don't you need vowels to read a language? The truth is, you don't. Try to read this. Yeah, we could write English like this. You don't really need the vowels. You just need to know enough English to fill in the vowels mentally. Okay. We have pictograms, rebus, consonants. Now we need to invent vowels. This might have happened by accident because some of these sounds, like the glottal stop, did not exist in languages like Greek. So probably the Greek couldn't even hear the glottal stop at the beginning of alf or alp. But they could hear the a, which was the first vowel, so they reinterpreted the symbol not as the glottal stop but as the vowel Ah, and thereby they invented the vowels for ancient Greek. And the rest is modification of the characters until they come to our days, to a system with consonants and vowels. In summary, writing is a technology to represent language, and it is very different from language, as we saw. 
The first proto writing um, was images designed to be interpreted from context, which evolved through the Rebus principle into sounds, which were reinterpreted as consonants, which eventually were reinterpreted as vowels. In the next video, we'll look at other types of writing systems.